Ezekiel Barco. The only thing hotter than him right now that has anything to do with the state of Georgia is the new Lil Nas X album. This guy is on a tear. He is hotter than a dancing bobcat and is leading Atlanta United to nine points in three games. And we're going to talk about him as a legitimate MLS MVP candidate this week on the show. I ain't never ever seen you act like this before. You're getting bucket buckets. How you feel? The Barconaissance, certified lover Barco, whatever you want to call it, the man is on fire. He's in fuego, seven goals, six assists. He is killing it since coming back from the Olympics, we've said the last couple episodes, but really he's taken it up a notch. I mean, since we recorded the last episode, he scored a couple of banger goals. He's having a blast out on the pitch, and he is dominating and dictating every portion of the game and really has become Atlanta United's offensive leader. And because of all that, he's making a real case to be among the MLS MVP conversation. So we're going to put him up against some of the contenders throughout the league, as well as compare his numbers to Miguel Almarones from 2018. Now, Miggy didn't win MVP that year. Of course, Joseph did. But Barco's performances have kind of been more Miguel-like in terms of scoring a lot of goals and providing a lot of assists, whereas Joseph won the award that year because he scored on everything he touched, really. And there was no one who... He was even going to come close to, to usurping him for MVP that year. But Barco and Almiron, that comparison fits a little better, as well as uh, the comparison to some of the other guys in the league who are probably in that conversation too. So first we'll do Barco and Miggy. Obviously two different types of players, two different roles, two different teams, but we see similarities in their goal output, their assist output, and the fact that those are both kind of meshing together, not really getting one way more than the other. And Barco is really starting to influence every single aspect of the game like Miguel did when he was really cooking here in Atlanta for his two years. So in Miguel's 2018 year, he scored 12 goals and had 11 assists, and again, would have been right in that MVP conversation had Joseph not had one of the best years MLS had ever seen. This year, in about half of the matches that Miguel played, Barco has 7 goals and 6 assists, and that puts him kind of right in line to either reach those numbers Miguel hit, or the way he's playing, even possibly um, overtake them and really uh, insert himself further into that conversation with some of the other players around the league who are having great years too. And speaking of those players, only a handful of guys in the rest of the league have that high of both goals and assists so far. You've got Hani Mukhtar from Nashville, Daniel Saloy from Sporting KC, Valentin Castellanos from NYC FC, Nani in Orlando, you know, a rival, but we gotta, we gotta give Nani his due, Albert Rusna from Real Salt Lake, and Adam Buxka from New England. And these players are all on teams that are in the playoff picture, with Buscas Revolution looking to be like they're going to win the Supporter Shield, barring a, a pretty big collapse. And so that likely places him at the top of the MVP leaderboard. But none of them right now are hotter than Zeke, who's registered a, either a goal or an assist in all but one of Atlanta's last nine matches, all coming since he returned from the Olympics. And so while, yes, he's playing great, he's on fire, this is not a prisoner of the moment take that Barco's going to be MVP. He's got a lot of work to do, Atlanta still has a lot of work to do, and it's going to be tough to catch one of those guys who are on one of the top two teams in the East or West, uh, putting up a ton of points and, and scoring a lot of goals and assists. But he's right there. If he continues this pace, albeit it's a pretty lofty pace, but even if he drops off a bit, if he continues providing those points, whether a goal or assist, uh, per match or getting a couple goals or in a couple assists uh, kind of per week if they're playing two matches in a week that's how he can continue to climb up that leaderboard and continue to rack up the assists and rack up the goals that is probably what is going to decide the MVP race and just as hot as Barco obviously is the team right now they just went nine points in three matches securing every possible point had a great week and what's so great to see is the team is having so much fun right now. They're enjoying being on the pitch, and they're just enjoying being back in front of the fans, having a good time playing well, playing fun soccer, and they're really enjoying themselves. And it was such a great scene after the match over the weekend to see all of them go into where uh, the golden spike was being hit in after the game. This was something I don't think any of us have ever seen before, to see nearly the entire team up on that stand with the golden spike winner for the match. Take a look.
that's really the sign that Atlanta United is back. And remember Harris Kruskis, my friend, was on the show a couple weeks ago. He thought maybe that moment would come after the Nashville game, which it didn't. He was a little early on his prediction, but I think that moment right there, not even the win against DC, but that moment right there is what Harris was alluding to when he said this. I think this will be the first match where the rest of the league is like, oh shit, Atlanta United is back. That's right, the Five Stripes have won seven of eight. They've scored 10 goals in their last three matches. They're literally scoring faster than we can upload episodes. To score 10 goals in three matches, let alone 10 matches, was almost unthinkable, unfathomable earlier this season when it was a 0-0 draw twice a week or a 1-1 draw every week or just losing 3-0 or 4 nothing. It was, it was horrible. You couldn't imagine scoring that many goals. And we really can't emphasize enough the turnaround from Rob Valentino to Gonzalo Pineda now and just the complete culture shift and the return to Atlanta United's identity and the return to fun. And Tyler Pilgrim on Dirty South Soccer this week had a great, a great article and had a great one sentence that he put in that just really resonated and I think it kind of encapsulates this whole run. He said it wasn't the winning that caused the fun, it was the fun that caused the winning. And I think that's exactly right. I think that's the exact approach that Atlanta United has taken with Valentino, now with Pineda. It's let these players be free, let them do their thing. They're very skilled players, especially the guys up front, the BAM front four, Barco, Araujo, Marcelino, Moreno, and Joseph Martinez. Those guys are having a blast, getting a lot of great production from Miles Robinson and George Bello in the back. The midfield is holding strong and they're just enjoying themselves. They're playing free and we, we keep reiterating it, but they keep topping themselves and they keep continuing to level up and, and advance where they're and, and advance their level of play. They're not just kind of doing the same thing week in and week out and, and winning and kind of getting stale. They're doing new fun things and new enjoyable, better soccer and incorporating Pineda's new ideas in each match and that's really carrying through um, and carrying their success. And so, this weekend, Atlanta United travels to Philly on Saturday afternoon. They're the team that's actually directly below Atlanta United in the standings, and you know after what happened in the CONCACAF Champions League earlier this season that Atlanta will want to exact some revenge on Philly. It's a new Atlanta team, and they're really going to want to go up into, into Philly's place and, and make a statement, as well as continue to, to move up the Eastern Conference standings. And, with a win, Atlanta United can finally have more wins than draws on the season which is just, with all the draws earlier in the season, and that, that was just tough. So to be able to have more wins than draws is a big win in and of itself if Atlanta can grab the three points this weekend. And this weekend, we'll obviously all have eyes on Joseph Martinez to see if he can score MLS goal number 100. Kind of selfishly want him to do it at home. Maybe let Moreno and Araujo and Barco provide the scoring this weekend and then, and then get number 100 back in the bends. Um, but we know it's going to be a show with Joseph anyway. Uh, regardless of where he scores number 100, um, and we know it's going to come soon. So you guys enjoy that match this weekend. We will be back here next week on 90 on Peachtree. Once again, I am Corey Knapp. Be sure to follow me and Atlanta Sports Unlimited at our handles down there on the screen. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, please, and thank you, and we will see you next week on 90 on Peachtree.